So that sounds that sounds good. Okay, so we're here with IntroLend. Um, IntroLend is a lending platform. If you guys have heard of us or, or seen us around the office, we act as the Keller Williams Finance Desk here for the Market Center. The idea being that if your mortgage needs the things that you need to try and figure out for your borrowers to get them into loans and into houses, we're here to help facilitate that and make that happen for you guys. Um, we do have an agent facing app that works really, really well for agents and for you guys, right? And the idea behind that app is to make things as easy as possible for you guys in order to be able to get that financing underway and get that pre-approval back in hand. Um, the idea with it is as you send over um, what we call a fast track, which is basically a, an agent referral to us, um, it will put together a link for your client to be able to go on and fill out our online application and be able to start getting things uh, put together as far as uh, financing goes. It also gives them a spot where they're able to put in their documents and, and get things uh, turned into us so that we can review them and get things turned around on a, on a mortgage pre-approval. Uh, what's nice about that app is that all the communication that you um, will see will go through that app as well as you know, whatever phone calls or text messages you want to send to us as that finance desk. Um, the other great part about this is uh, IntroLend acts as a mortgage broker. So I do have a lot of mortgage options available to me to be able to lend and, and work with your clients and, and facilitate their financing through one of our options. We also work with your preferred lenders. So whether that be uh, like a First Colony or Intercap or Security National or Oh, there's, there's probably about 30, 40 different lenders that are on our platform right now that you can pick and choose from. And the idea is to be able to provide your clients with the ability to shop around kind of as a one-stop shop. Uh, that way, they're not going around town trying to put applications in all over, turning in the same documents everywhere. They can kind of do it with one fell swoop. And uh, we help facilitate that shopping and give them that ability to be able to see the apples to apples comparison between everything so that they can see... Uh, not only where, where best pricing is, but, but maybe give them a little bit of nuance as to where, um, you know, service levels and uh, speed and, and some of this other stuff may come into play at the same time as we've learned uh, the different lenders that, that are on the platform and, and have developed relationships with them. It's been, it's been a neat experience to be able to provide that to your clients and, and work the, with them hand in hand. Um, the idea being that once they do decide to pick a lender, uh, we will make sure that everybody gets in contact, everybody uh, has their information, and uh, the handoff goes smoothly. So the work that uh, we do for the pre-approval process, uh, it's not like they're having to start completely over with whatever lender they decide to go with. Uh, we hand over all of that work to them so that they can hit the ground running. And, and usually this can happen before a purchase contract is even underway and, and in hand so that as soon as that contract hits the desk, they're already ready to go and, and have things, um, you know, geared up to, to make it happen for them. Um, so the, the idea, and, and I don't know if uh, we have the, probably we don't have an interland deck slide or, or anything as far as the agent facing app. Um, the idea for anybody new who um, will download that app and, and put themselves through as a fast track, I do have a $5 little gift card that I can give you just so you can see how the process works and see how things are set up through that app. So um, it, it's a green little icon with a house in it that says IntraLend Agents. If, if people will download that and make that happen, then um, oh, okay. yep, as, as soon as I... How do I download? Did you go to your, what are you, your okay. app store? Okay. Okay. So again, the idea being that if you'll download that app and put yourself through as a test fast track, test referral over to us, we will, um, that'll kind of show you how the platform works, what goes on with it, shows you how you're, you're able to select the different lenders that you prefer to work with. And, uh, and then, like I said, we'll make sure to get in contact with you and give you a $5 gift card for doing all of that. Are there any questions, any 
anything that I can help answer while we've got your attention? I think my favorite question to ask is how much does it cost our clients to use IntroLen? So the, the question was how much does it cost to use IntroLen? And the answer is it's free to your clients. The, the way that we're set up is through our partner lenders and, and being able to uh, facilitate the loans ourselves. Just like any other mortgage company, we we make our money on the back end when everything closes and, and is done. We don't charge anything up front to your clients or to you guys for using us or for using the platform. Yep. Yep. Like I said, just a one-stop shop for you. It allows you to be able to do that and uh, gives, you, gives your clients a variety of options to be able to figure out their financing. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Awesome. Okay. We'll look for those fast tracks and we'll make sure to give up those gift cards. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to Ignite, everyone. We are happy to have Brady Summers with us today. Um, he'll be teaching session eight, capture leads with social media. I am going to move so you can sit at the head of the table. So it seems more. <laughs> Is there anything I can get for you? Nope. Ready? You good? I think so. Okay. All right. You guys have a good evening. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. So I guess uh, to first introduce myself, I am Brady Summers. I uh, do operations for Becca Summers. Right? We're, it's just the two of us right now, but her team essentially. Um, my, my job is all of our social media, well, not all of it, most of our social media stuff, um, and then anything on the back end um, operationally and uh, even transaction stuff I'm, I'm doing right now. Um, last year, just for a um, little bit of context, we did 55 transactions last year. Um, I think we're somewhere in the 24 range for this year so far um, right now. Um, so that's that's a little bit about myself. I guess I uh, I been in real estate officially for two and a half years. Prior to that, um, I kind of was always in the back end, working a corporate job and helping Becca. Uh, she retired me just just uh, January 2020, right before COVID, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, it's it's been a fun whirlwind. Um, and yeah, so I come from a robotics background, engineering robotics. And then before that, I actually had some time in, in marketing. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, lead generation, but more uh, really sp sp honing in on uh, how to capture leads with social media. Um, before we get started, what what platforms do you think of when you hear social media what instagram facebook tiktok tiktok instagram yeah instagram linkedin tiktok i i like the the linkedin i, I know someone who's actually killing killing it on linkedin which mm -hmm. is is pretty pretty absurd that you, you could go and, and do that um anything else any other platforms that are anyone's using or twitter don't know anyone who was actually using Twitter, but. <laughs> um, so, um, like, like, like I was saying, we're going to focus on capturing leads with social media. Um, this doesn't is not going to be talking about running ads to capture leads. This is going to be uh, through a natural uh, contact, you know, where where we're building our presence and our expertise to our friends and, and followers. So the uh, process we're going to be going through is the 1051 engagement system, posting practices, the social media strategies. We're going to go through recaps and ahas and then talk about the daily success systems. Uh, you've learned about the 1051 in previous sessions, correct? No, I don't remember. Can I remember 10 4, not 1051. I don't think they've done anything. According to the notes, they have. So I haven't gone through Ignite myself. Can you tell me what 1051 stands for? So um, 10 like likes or DMs, um, or no, 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 10 
likes, five DMs, one like personal engagement, I yeah. think. Pretty close. So it's 10 likes, comment, or 10 likes, uh, interactions, oh, likes, no hearts. No, not, not comments. comments. It's five comments. Okay. And then one direct message, um, share, or uh, post. And, and we'll be talking about that a lot. So, um, so 10 likes, five comments, and one direct message. Yeah, direct message or comment, or not comment, uh, reshare of a post or something or a uh, post of your own. Yeah. yeah, one of those three things is what the one, and that is daily. Yeah. I think posting at least once a day. Mm -hmm posting or like you could send a direct message one day and the next day post the next day share something that someone else has posted okay. and, and change it up but um so this this quote from gary keller says it takes time to learn something more time to implement it and even long to approach the mastery of it um have any of you read the book uh outliers by maxim or gladwell Mac, max what's his name Max Gladwell, I can't remember his name. It's Glad his last name's Gladwell. So it, outliers. outliers. Uh, in the book, he talks a lot about um, becoming a, mas a master of, of whatever you're doing. And he, he claims that it takes about 10,000 10, hours of practicing something to become a master. So I just kind of find it, it, it leans into this quote from Gary uh, talking about becoming a master. Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell, not Maxim. <laughs> it, makes, it makes more sense. Malcolm Gladwell. Is like one of the guys in Caesar's <laughs> yeah. So I was close. Um, it's a great book. I do love it. Um, so uh, let's talk about the 1051 engagement system. Um, <clears throat> so social media, it's huge. It's free. It's awesome. And it's able to connect you to, to people. Where, where you're at, which is, is really, really incredible. Um, for, for context, since Beck is here, I'm gonna hit, lean on her and pick on her a little bit. Um, our biggest referring client came from a post that you did when you first got into real estate. And you just said, hey, I'm, I'm new to real estate. Yes, will you share the story here? Cause you're gonna remember details better than me. Like I started in August and I posted in August, so like that. Um, and I said, "Hey, just got my license. If you know anyone looking for a cell, I would love to connect with them." So a guy that I casually dated in high school was like, "I'm selling my house with Ivory, but my neighbor is interested in selling this house." And so he referred me to his neighbor, and I didn't feel comfortable going on the listing appointment by myself because it was for two houses. So I took a seasoned agent with me to the appointment. And we went through the appointment. We didn't, didn't get it signed. And if you leave without it signed, the likelihood you'll get it signed later is much, much smaller. So try not to do that. Because um, it was us or another agent that the seller knew. But the other agent just was not getting back to him, was not following up with him. And I just kept following up and kept following up. And this guy had been a realtor at one point in his career. So he knew a little bit more than the general public. And he's like, I really liked that you were new and energetic about it, but you had someone seasoned with you. And that transaction has led, we counted last a while ago, and it's like 45 transactions has come from knowing that person. So a Facebook post led to that because people who know you in your personal life right now might not feel comfortable to use you because they know you're new, but they will love to refer you because it's kind of that one degree of separation. And the new person who's been referred to you has no idea if you're brand new or not. So the mentality of being new and you know people will know, I've never had anyone ask how long I've been in the business, ever. And when I- did you just start this August? Uh, um, I started in 2013. Oh. So I was 25, 24 when I started. And there was never like a question. So it's worth it. Yeah. Is that what you want? Yep, that, okay. that's exactly. And, and then I actually was doing another, we, we've got a family that we've done a, 
well, actually it's two families, a ton of transactions with, I think I counted 14, Mo's mm -hmm. and Hoyers that all came from a simple Facebook post. What's your house worth? You want to find out I'm practicing, you know, I'm new in real estate. I'm practicing doing CMAs. And from that, we sold both of the neighbor's houses because they were like best friends. We helped them buy new houses and we've helped like, all, of their all of their kids and they, mm -hmm. they're big, large families. So, you know, so there's some who haven't sold yet, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. We're, we're basically the family's realtor at this point in time because of a Facebook post, you know, and it's one of those that I think had we not started building the trust early when it came time to sell, I think they would have gone with uh, Randy Smith because he's a neighbor that they knew and trusted, but because we started early and, and started building that expertise mm -hmm. in their mind that they... Because from that post, they didn't sell until like two years later. Yeah. So it wasn't that post led to a listing that year. Yeah. But that's what started the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yep. it was just, do you want to know what your house is? Yep. Which then also let them, us put them into our marketing so that, that you know, the, the other things. But and then when they had questions about should I replace my windows or not, is there a return on investment for that? You know, when they asked, I had no idea. So then I jumped into the research and figured it out, answered yep. it. You didn't know you were coming to work today, did you? <laughs> so um, I, I love social media and it is a primary responsibility of my job. So I just wanted to share a little bit why I volunteered to, to do this class is because it, I think it's huge what, what we can reach and accomplish. Um, with that, um, so the, as we were talking, the, the 10 likes, loves, um, this is just, getting out there and in interacting with people so that you see more of their stuff. So what, what I would do with this is not liking the same, same 10 people's posts every day, strategically go through your list, you know, your actual friends list and say, I haven't seen this person for a while, click on it, see if they've done anything in the last day or so that you can go and like on um, and, and strategically do that so that you're hitting everybody, you know, you can use, if you're using command or something, a CRM, you could set it up. Um, if you've, what's the D2D, I can't remember the, the acronym, but they, you can set which contacts you're supposed to be reaching out to. So you can use that as your system for it. You can do it in a spreadsheet, just some way of, of having a these are the people I haven't contacted this quarter and, and start trying to, to interact with them um, so that you're seeing engagement. Because the more you engage with people that maybe you, you don't see as often, the more their stuff will actually start. You know, the algorithms are going to bring them to you. Um, that's why when you start seeing somebody you hate, like and they just irritate you, you're going to see that more often because you're like sitting there reading their post, getting angry about it. So the more you spend time engaging with people, the more you're going to see those people and you'll start seeing a, a more diverse um, thing, which gives you that opportunity to, if there's a life event happening, something that may make them need a, to move that you're, you're aware of it happening. But there's also other things that you'll see that you can be like, oh, you know, so their, their, their mother died, something that you can, you know, send, send a, a card, flowers, cookies, something. So it, it just allows you to really tap into your, your sphere a lot better. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Does the algorithm tr um, track how long you spend on each post? Yes. Does it? Yeah. I haven't seen seen it anywhere, but I am positive it does. They have okay. an eyeball tracker that yeah. can track where you're looking as well. They, they I, I know um, That's great. <laughs> things like uh, TikTok, not TikTok, uh, Instagram, they actually can sense where your hand is placing on the phone. And so <laughs> so, you know when you're getting those you get getting those like notifications like yes you're, you're swiping too quick just you might maybe you should go to bed now that is all in their algorithm saying that you're you disengaged in their platform and their job is to keep you engaged as long as possible so if you get to the point where you're burning out you may not come back to the platform the next day so they're they're like hey why don't you go to bed so that you go to bed on a high note and come back. Their, their algorithms are, are creepy how much they are getting into our brains. You know, there, there's days where it's like I get on something and I'm like, how did you know that I was in this mood today? Yeah. Like it's, it's creepy. 
So the more time, yes, I would. I, I think they listen to us too. Oh, I, I'm positive. Like, I'm positive. <laughs> whatever, yeah. like, like next thing, like I'm getting ads for like whatever, like you know whatever we're talking about. I, I pick up her phone all the time, and I'm I'm like cookies, cookies, <laughs> just. So it starts being like, hey, we should go get some cookies. <laughs> so, so 10 likes, um, loves, you know, positive comments on, or positive interactions on posts a day. Um, then we're going to do five comments on things. You know, these don't have to be really well thought out, like sonnets. They, these can be like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. They're getting so big, you know, just simple comments just so that it's bringing, because how often do you look at the people who actually like your stuff? Like I actually, I, I do because I don't post very often. So I like seeing who, who does what emojis and, and I, I find, find it fun, but most people don't go in and, you know, especially if you're getting 50 or 60 or likes, you're not looking at who's doing it. The comments though, people are reading and oftentimes they're gonna respond to what you say. And then uh, after the comments uh, is the one of these three things, which is the, the share. So if somebody posts something inspirational that you really think your followers would benefit from, or maybe it's a post that um, recently there was a news article about, um, why can't I think of their name? Not homie, the other one. Open door. open door about uh the ftc cracking down on open door and, and suing suing open door so you know that's something we shared because it's very important to, to consumers um and then the other thing is like a direct message and did any of you go to the class last thursday that josh taught so he talked one thing that i learned from that was that you can do a direct message from the stories and the reels um and that is what no i i do, i do not use stories and what's your job again? <laughs> i do not use she does the stories in reels <laughs> no so yeah that we we have a, a divide we we've got hands out in every which way and she takes on some and i take on others so um but that that is one way that you can interact without it being because that that's always been my problem with a direct message is anytime somebody who i know is in real estate marketing or in uh, title, not title, uh, MLMs or anything. When I get a DM from them, it's like, what do you need? You know, like which type of Tupperware party am I coming to this weekend? So so being able to message them through a story is a reel, honestly is, is pretty incredible. Like it's, yeah. My friends posted that if I like, Lightning happened by his house, so he had to fly out fix something. And I'm like, oh no, is it your Florida house? So then it's a conversation related mm -hmm. to it, but it's also house material. Yeah. So and that's I think that's huge because so then it's not like, hey, come to my seminar. It's you know you're engaging with what's going on in their lives, which is really what you're trying to do. Is if if it ever comes back to real estate, that's great. But the purpose is just staying engaged so that they because it's it's top of mind that's all we're trying to do is be top of mind because when they think of real estate they're going to think of two or three people and you just want to be one of those people preferably the first so do we have any ah ahas at this point um for me this is just another thing that you mentioned like you want to know what your house is worth mm -hmm. i think that's an awesome idea to like get people to engage and it's like they'll read your post like oh yeah you're doing real estate and then they i mean then that's it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like to get them to actually engage and when you post things a lot of times people just look at it but they don't respond mm -hmm. so that was fine yeah and i think because if if people know you're new anyways use it as a like hey i, I just need 10 people to let me help do CMAs on their properties just so I can get better at it. Yeah. You know, you want to know what your house is worth. The market's done crazy things this year. And I'd love to, to do a CMA. And, and, you know, if you've got a, a funky house or something cool, that would even be better, you know, because then you, you get people to be like, oh, my house is really weird. Let's, you know, and you're, you're tapping into their emotion of wanting to 
kind of find out something for free with with no obligation yeah. you know in their mind but yeah. really what you're doing is cementing yourself as a real estate professional and by saying you know can you help me people always want to have you yeah so they're helping it builds less pressure it's not a selfish it's a oh i'm helping my friend so when you do that so if you don't mind if i get a little bit deeper into that particular thing you do like a picture of a house and then say do you want to know what your house is worth and then leave it at that or do you like go into the whole explanation of like i need 10 people for whatever so like a lot of people run ads of do you want to know if so your house? Oh, okay. So that one's not as valuable, but I think if you say, hey guys, as you know, I'm new to real estate, I'm looking to help buy people do evaluation on their house. If you could let me practice on your house, that would be awesome. Okay. Because uh, then you get people who aren't even thinking about selling. Yeah. But the fact that they were interested enough, it's somewhere in their mind. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you'll see free home evaluations everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you that's high, that like they're helping you more to do it, they're yeah. more likely to be like, oh, yeah, okay, love to. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree with that because that, that's what you're trying to do. And then you're also trying to get engagement on your post because the more engagement you have and then you're responding to people, the more engagement that's going to breed. Um, to kind of put that into perspective, we had when I took over doing social media, we had 700 ish followers on Facebook. Um, and what's on our on our business page, which we are talking personal pages with this stuff, there is a, a diff difference between having a business and a, a personal page. But for, for this, I am talking about about our business page. Um, and I took over and I within the first week had a, a post that kind of by accident went viral you know i posted a house in montana that you know i probably saw somewhere else someone else post but we did a lot of things right on accident and then afterwards you know we dove into how did we do this and, and un try to understand it and what we realized is number one we, we posted a house and, and it was one of those weeks of covid where every we just got re-locked down right as summer came out and everybody was home mm -hmm. So we, um, there, there was, pe there, people had nothing to do. Yeah. So that was one of, one of the things that we got lucky with. But the next was, I misspelled the word cell. I, I spelled cell instead of cell. And S-A-L, yeah, instead of S-E-L-L. -L. And, oh, I know, was, there are a lot of grammar Nazis. But that was actually really good because people started commenting. So, so they they start started from a negative place. They started commenting, and and so you know we went in and correct, fixed the spelling mistake after a little bit. And we we just kept responding to people, at which engagement breeds engagement, and so you know, um, and then later shoot, there was another thing we ended up doing. We, we didn't put any links because Facebook takes anything that takes you away from their platforms. We didn't have a link to the house. So that also people were like, oh, tell me more about this house, you know, more engagement. And, and basically it just, it blew up, which we went from 700 followers to 22,000 followers. So what was so intriguing about this house? Uh, it, it was, it's a huge, yeah, it had a, it, it just a oh, huge well, mansion. Good. Yeah. Uh, and there was some scandalous stuff in the way the person, I guess, laundered money to, to buy it and then lost it. And and, and it was just really a, a fun house to look at the pictures. Yeah. Oh, we uh, the way I put the pictures, instead of just um, like copying one or two pictures or uh, that way, I upload each picture individually which, you know, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, because then you get 35 pictures. So people are like, oh, cool, there's 30 pictures to look at. We're two and a half years later, no, it's two years later. Two years later, we're still getting comments on that post. Wow. So it's it's all about just getting in there and getting engagement and then re-engaging. That, and that's, we, we had her sister in Texas, our admin, and then both of us would just sit and comment to anybody. Yeah, reply, like, and it just, it went like wildfire. It was it was it was a crazy just how wow. far that reach was, and and now you know our we're into different problems because of it. But 
getting finding the right people to target now is harder, but that's it is what it is. But, all right, so now let's talk a little bit about posting prep. Actually, do we want to? Why don't we take a moment? What what platforms are we using? Like what which is your? Because how do I say this? We do, we don't want to use try and use everything all at once. You know, dividing our attentions. What platform is the one that you're focusing your? My go to is Instagram and then Facebook. Okay. Why don't we take? Yeah. yeah. I want to imply LinkedIn just because I have some people on there. Oh, I don't know, but I don't, I guess I'm unclear as to how. It's not as engaging. Yeah, it's just people that say With LinkedIn, what the way I've seen it be successful is, is posting business related articles and the end. Really focusing heavily heavily on the industry and the real estate market and how, what it's doing, and that's where I've seen that that be successful. But you want to focus on one. Yeah. It, so if Instagram's your thing, focus on Instagram. If that's your bad, or like what the other ones. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you'll be less effective. So Instagram automatically posts to my Facebook page, so I kind of more do Instagram and then. Mm -hmm. Facebook kind of is a yeah. secondary. Yeah, and what, sorry. No, go ahead, you. Sorry, I'm distracting. <laughs> um, the thing is how people engage in Instagram is not how people engage in Facebook. Right. So doing that, it's kind of cheating, which I do it all the time, so I'm not saying that. Oh. <laughs> um, but you're not gonna get the same engagement because with Instagram, by mastering it, you're looking at people who are looking at photos, people are looking at reels, where TikTok or Facebook Things reels are great and they promote them, but if it's not, yeah, so it's not as great. And like the captions don't transfer. So should I not link the two? Um, it's not the worst thing to do because they're owned by the same company. Like you don't get downgraded if you share it, like if you shared it from TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, but it works while you're mastering it. And then eventually you'll want to separate the two. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I, I don't think there's any problem with it because you may not be getting the engagement that you would if you are directly posting to Facebook, but it's still, if people see it, you're top of mind. So it's, you know, it's a, they're not necessarily looking for the, the shared Instagram post. You know, it's not the same, but I still see them all the time on my feed and I think, oh, cool. And, and you know, may, you know I, I, I think it's better than doing nothing. Okay. But um, so, Case, in which uh, platform do you primarily use? Yeah, so I, I, I usually just use Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think what I'm kind of trying to, because I feel like we've talked about social media quite a bit this last week, week and a half. And so I'm trying to like um, do, I, I think it's stories um, and try and just try and like keep my face out there um i've actually gotten like talking to people and, and the good thing is they can just like they leave a comment basically it's just a straight dm and then i've been able to talk with some few people so i i've actually enjoyed that part about it um i remember they did the statistic of the most isn't it I, and i could be wrong with it, the most used um social media platform is facebook but um I feel like lots of people my age and lots of people I know use Instagram. So I'm kind of focusing more on Instagram than Facebook. Okay, perfect. Um, and I, I have heard that statistic, but I do feel Facebook is dying. And that's that's where my primary focus is, is Facebook. And I, I feel like it really is dying. Um, it just isn't keeping up to date with the trends and stuff that Instagram and TikTok are currently doing. Um, so let's take a few minutes right now and let's start by doing our our 10 let's let's go and find 10 uh things that we can like comment or not comment like or uh part interact with is it just starting see how, how it tells you how much i use instagram i have an account <laughs>
Are we liking the com and commenting both at the same time? Uh, if you want to. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, if we want to just do all, all three of them right now. These are a lot of ads on Instagram. I feel like my whole current Instagram feed is like 75% ads and 5% people sometimes. Yeah. So I actually went to my followers and I'm looking at that oh. versus going through. Oh, so you'd be like, who's someone I've been here? Yeah, that's, I, I've gone into my friends and I'm just like, okay, I haven't seen you for a while. You're a real estate agent, so I'm not going to do anything with you. Like, just. I don't accept most of them. I know. If I don't know you, I don't know you. And one thing you can do to really get some of the attention is you can go through and like the last like five of their things then it fills up their notification screen. Mm -hmm. So like if people are gonna start with like all the same person, um, it's kind of a way to be like, oh yeah, they like me too. So liking something super old is not a bad thing. Except me going and liking those thirst traps of Jason Momo, I guess that is a problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got a No worries. We are currently viewing the activities. So we're liking 10 things, commenting on five. What are you doing on Facebook? Whatever your preferred platform is. Oh, my Facebook. I don't want to use it. I know nothing about social media. Nice. Great. Absolutely. Stuff. Just warning you. That's a perfect place to start. So this is a perfect place. What do I do? Uh, so long and then um, you want to meet them. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why are they such strange people? I don't know. It's a random connection. We have to go through and add 10 people. That's a great way to start building it. That one, I do. It's not what you guys do. Um, they, well, they've already done it, but uh, starting off point. 
more day. And if your accounts aren't due, that's another piece you can add to it if that is coming for you. So sometimes if it's like, oh, we have like four mutual friends, I'll add them because I have that connection. It depends on how you want to go. Yeah, it's all about. And that's one thing I would do is, especially if you're um, newer to the social media, I would allocate some time to building your your friend list where you go through and say, okay, these people I know, or these people are friends with so and so, and just start adding you know, five or 10 friends in, in said time and really try to hone in on people that would be inside of your, your sphere, people that you'd want to try to cultivate that relationship with. As I go through, I'm realizing I uh, follow way too many business pages. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's uh, go for two more minutes and then we'll How are we coming along? Good work. What are you doing? I joined KW. What? Yeah. Since when? Since like uh, two or three weeks ago. I didn't know I that. For treating last week. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I decided I'd do it. I think I saw it's a, it's a commercial. Commercial. Try, try to mix it up. So, really? Yeah. What did what the case say about that? It's just like, yeah, it's cool. You know? So, yeah. Wow. That's good. Yeah. It's been good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm yeah. doing good. Just trying to get prepped for a, a listing appointment. Oh. Day, but 
That's all I got going on. That's cool though. Yeah. That's cool. Well, what in the case did he just was like cool with that? He didn't think yeah, he was just like, yeah. It kind of gives us like our opportunity to kind of do two, two different things plus okay, like I want to eventually be a mom. <laughs> so I feel like I would have more personal. I would agree with that. That's good. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it done. Well, I'm proud of you. Yeah. 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 It is so weird. Doesn't know me. Who's that? That's the for you. So he, it's my husband. He works for a client. So yeah, we go to the gym. Maybe different. So he talks everything. That's cool. All right. So we'll we'll start moving forward um, and talk about posting practices. So there is an 80-20% or an 80-20 uh, rule that we should be following when uh, posting on your personal page. Um, like I said, this is for your personal, not your business. Business, you'd probably reverse that. Um, so 80% of your posts on your, your, your Instagram, your Facebook um, should be about things going on in your lives, um, not necessarily real estate related. Um, and then 20% of that will be uh, business. So depending on your posting cadence, so if you say you post um, one, one time a day, that means that every uh, 10 days, you're gonna have two posts be about work. So, you know, once every two weeks or a little less than every two weeks. So uh, the, the personal interest posts, here's some ideas that they have for what you can you do. And you're gonna wanna really cater it to your personality. You don't try to put yourself into a box that you don't fit into. So uh, the, their suggestions are uh, talking about your pets. You know, if you're, if you're a dog person, you're likely gonna find friends with other dog people and have that in common. Same thing with, with art, cooking, baking recipes, um, if you're the type that likes to exercise and work out, and, you know, post that type of stuff. Um, outdoor adventures. If you're a hiker, you, you know, show your your hiking. Uh, Jordan uh, Larson's a good good example he, from here in the office who, of showing his outdoor lifestyle, where he he goes and does his mountain hikes. He po posts that, and it's really fun to watch his his um, adventures. Um, things like live music. If you go to concerts all the time. Um, team sports or if you have kids who have sports stuff like that that you can share um, one of the few things that I post is Disneyland I'm crazy about Disneyland we go all the time so that's kind of one of my things that I post because it's who I am uh, so that's you you want wanting to make make your posts about who you are not feeling you know trying to, to emulate somebody else that you're seeing to be successful unless that's a personality that you either want to be or that you are. And then the 20% the of your business, those are going to be things like your listings, open houses, uh, awards that you've uh, won, speaking events. Uh, once you get to the point where you're teaching classes, like for example, I'll be teach posting that, you know, I taught this class today because that's an opportunity to share with my people that, hey, I'm in, in real estate and I'm, you know, actively doing this every day. Uh, if you are struggling to find things to post, uh, one thing that we do, and I, I do it nearly every Saturday, it's, it's on our business page instead of our personal. I just reach out to an agent here in the office and I say, hey, Cam, and your really beautiful $1.2 million listing in, in Eagle Mountain, can I share it on my Facebook page? Almost everybody in the office is okay with it because it's just more publicity for their, their listings. So reach out to, you know, you can go on the MLS. Um, and search for an agent or an office and just reach out. I've even reached out to people outside of our office, outside of Keller Williams because of where we're kind of focusing on the luxury properties for Saturdays and had very little pushback from people from, for sharing um, listings. And that's <laughs> one place where if, if you really don't have something that you can share, there's 
you know, 300 agents in this office who all had have different listings at different times that almost all of them are willing to share. So um, same thing, you could do the same thing with open houses. You could find an open house that's going on like on Saturday and say, hey, guys, I just saw this really cool open house. I wanted to share it with you. It's a really funky house in Salt Lake, something like that. Um, as you start winning awards, that's a great way of, of, of proof of success. And then speaking events, the other thing that I would add to this list that they don't have is as you start getting reviews from clients, um, sharing those. And another option is you can go on to the, the Keller Williams Westfield Facebook page, or not Facebook page, Google page, and find a review that talks about Keller Williams Westfield. You're free to use that, you know, because you are Keller Williams Westfield. So if you need a, a proof of success, but don't have one yourself yet, Share a generic, you know, I worked with Keller Williams. They were really great, you know, from, from the Google page. And that's uh, appropriate to use. Where, where would they find that? Um, search Keller Williams Westfield on Google. And then on the right, I do it, would do it on a computer because I work on a computer. On the right-hand side, it'll have like the reviews link. And you just click on, it'll say like 89 reviews and then pop up. And then a lot of them will say which agents they worked with, but I'll just go and find one that is generic and use that. Mm -hmm. Yep, and just because it's like a, a search result and it'll be at the map search result. Google My Business is another social, social media um, opportunity that is out there. Uh, but they have moved from being a kind of a standalone platform to it's integrated with the uh, map, Google Maps now. So from a consumer side, it doesn't, nothing's really changed, but from a management, it's done through Google Maps, but it, it, it acts as a, a map search result when you're looking for a business or something. So um, you'll be able to find the reviews under the map results and then um find one that you can use for yourself you know that that specifically calls out just keller williams uh, and since we're all part of the same family that's in my opinion appropriate to use so if somebody says otherwise tell them to come yell at me <laughs> so um and then uh, to going above and beyond beyond if you are doing more than the, that 80, 20%. Um, the other 10% that you can add is things like community services posts, things that you're doing in the community. This is gonna do two things. One, it shows people that you're you know, a good person that, that cares about the community, but it also shows that you're working in the community and that becoming the local person uh, of, of your geographic region showing that, hey, oh, I'm out here in, you know, we'll say Payson, picking up garbage off the side of the road, something like that. It's gonna show to the people that follow you that, hey, you're actually out in these communities, you know the roads, you know what's needed. Um, and that that is an additional thing that you can post outside of that 80, 20%. And the recommendation is, is a max 10% of your posts be stuff like that. Do we have any ahas from that chapter? Just the generic review, but not really generic, but the KW, just mm -hmm. the generic review. Do you want me to pull one up and show you how I could yeah. find it while we're, we're here? So I would just come straight into to Google and just type in Kelly Williams Westfield. And then what you'll see is right here, 133 Google reviews. Oh, okay. So you click that and this pop-up comes up and then I've had multiple interactions with this business and all of them have been at me. The company continues to perform. I can't read that far. So that one is seven months ago. Is that an issue if you're going to post that from like today from seven months ago? No, I see no problem with it. And you don't necessarily have to post the date. If uh, um, Colby, yes. Oh, okay. yep. Colby, yes. Yeah. yeah so the, the person's name here is Colby Slater. 
one thing I also do is I, I screenshot posts mm -hmm. and then I'll just erase things I don't want on there. Like I, I won't modify their review, but I will, like if there's like Slater, I would probably erase all the, the, the later so that it's just Colby S. Seven months ago. Potentially. I, I, that I wouldn't necessarily the other option. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was before you yeah. Joined. The other option you have is you can hit newest and just say, oh, Shoney, that's, I wouldn't use that one because <laughs> if they click you, you know, if they come and look into it, they'll be like, oh, it's, it's their boss. Like, yeah. um, so you just like cut and paste that. Yeah. You can that that's you can either copy and paste it into a to a post or you can screenshot it if you're using uh windows if you do use a tool called snipping tool you can go in and just copy it and um you do have to if you're doing it facebook you do have to save it now you can't just paste from your stuff but uh it's really easy um So it's looking like that one seven months ago will be probably the most recent. Uh, don't want red sign. Yeah, so the, that one's the most recent one. But I, I would have no issues using it. But yeah, with being new, I'd probably admit how long ago it was. Okay. So. And you can always ask people who work with you professionally in a different regard to write the general review. I'm not a fan of it as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because like you'll see some of these people have hundreds of reviews and it's like not business related or they'll be like, hey, do this for me. Or leave a review and I'll give you a gift card. Like mm -hmm. those yeah, I think are yeah. great. That's not actual actually helpful to the public. Like all of our reviews are mm -hmm. uh occasionally I'll have a realtor or a lender leave yeah. me a review. Mm -hmm. But as much as possible, I want a professional because when people later in life look at your Google page and they're like, oh, hey, like these are legit reviews. So you're more likely to get that Google call versus the generic five star. I'll pull up ours just for, I just, I, I was planning on it, but now I don't know. I don't love Max. Push buttons that I don't know exist. <laughs> So pulls up, sees the real estate back to summers. Um, so if we go to newest just for, like we've got 94 five-star reviews that are mostly clients. Um, did I click newest? I thought we had Jason or... Oh, I thought it was like a week ago. Oh, there it is. So this is a lender here that we've we've worked with. And then, yeah, I'm trying to find Riley's. There's Riley's. So we do have a few, but they're usually people we've worked with in a professional capacity. I was the buyer's agent on Street. You also literally help him week, weeky, weekly, <laughs> weeky. So I do think trying to collect reviews is a huge component of our business that, because we can tell people that we're good all day long, but having someone else tell them it's we're a stranger. Yeah, right, it's exactly. totally legit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, more street like, friend than if you said it. Yeah. You, you you could show them anything in the world, but one random person would be like, yeah, I like them. Yeah. Like, Perfect. Oh, okay. So, um, all right, well, we'll move on past posting strategy practices to social media strategies. Um, so the strategies are to help you connect with people you know and or people you've met in one way, shape or form. So this is um, people that you've worked with in previous jobs. That's one place where I focus a lot of my, like trying to connect with new people. I'll go into somebody that I worked with at Micron and say, all right, who do you, are you friends with? And I'll go to, you know, if they don't have set their profiles, private friends, 
I'll just go through and start cherry picking. Be like, oh, I remember you, BB. Oh, I, I know you. And I just start picking people that I worked with. Maybe not in a lot, but enough that I recognize their name and try to build up my, my friends list with people that there's at least a little bit of, of like there, you know, at least some. Um, then there's uh, things like uh, your neighbor. Oh, this is posting about your neighborhood. So this would be your neighborhood groups and things that you can be a part of. If you live in um, the Silver Lake. So where are you guys all? Yeah, that's. I live in Saratoga Springs uh, by Talents Co Golf Course. So it's the Saratoga Springs development. Do they have their own Facebook page? Oh yeah. So be active on that. Mm -hmm. for
it's just kind of become her thing. And we still do the standing picture with the sign saying new homeowners or whatever, but the, the ones we use most of the time is, is just this candid picture of them signing, not really paying attention and, you know, just kind of become our thing. Um, you can post about listings. And like I said, once again, if you don't have a listing, find a listing from someone in the office or a friend or, you know, and because all it's going to do is be like, oh, wow, that's really cool that you got a listing. With them. You don't didn't say you had a listing. And if they click the link or whatever, they're going to see that it's, they could see that it's not yours. But you can just say, look at this really cool listing. And it's just going to start building that social proof that you're being successful. And then the last thing is engaging. So we kind of talked about this with our posts that went viral. But that was what really kept those wheels turning was going back into it and engaging with people because when you engage it breeds engagement so when you comment yeah when you comment like somebody says oh you know that tile is hideous and you can go back oh i know isn't it so crazy that somebody thought that was a good idea or something to comment to them and then you're going to get other people who are either going to start a new comment thread or continue down like oh that's the same green carpet my mom has in her house or you know some it, it, you're just trying to get people talking because it keeps you in front of them longer and it will get them re-engaging on future posts more often yes, it works the same for instagram. yeah it's instagram facebook um yeah tiktok's tiktok's the same but it is more like a business page for facebook like it because it it's more business posts that i guess it doesn't have to be so do you yeah. use TikTok a lot? So the, the platforms we use together, she does TikToks and Instagram. I do Facebook and YouTube and Google My Business. So okay. it's it's a lot and it's it, it's been baby steps. She was doing Facebook and Instagram by themselves. And then I took Facebook off and she brought on TikTok. And then I, and I, I've always done the Google My Business it's not super time intensive on that one. But then as I got good at Facebook's when we brought in YouTube. So now we've got five different platforms that. So do you do videos on, on TikTok? Like every day you do a video, not every day, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we try to have one video on YouTube a week, which has been hit and miss because I, I know. yeah, it's been busy. <laughs> so, um, So when you like make posts and stuff, is there like a template that photographers have that you can like make articles kind of more professional for our real estate folks? Um yes and no. There yeah, command has a lot of stuff. Let's see if we can get logged in. But like, would you say like have you, you want to post yeah, like, um, yeah. information? Like just for I don't know, like not like about a listing or anything, just like accounts. Like I don't know. For example, like I want an account. So I'm going into real estate. Should I just want to slash and like a picture of my house and be like, hey? Or is there a way to like see my headshot? But no, sure. So have you been able to get it, Amanda? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, so there, there's two, two, what? Focus on logging. Okay, I'm focusing on logging because I can't multitask and she knows that. I don't want labs, I just want the command. Uh, I kind of want to make some of mine. Right, you know your password? I thought I did, but I can look it up if we don't. I've seen people like they post about their business, but like their post looks totally unprofessional. Why would I want yeah. their business? I don't know. That's just kind yeah, of no. I, I I completely I, agree. Okay, so but there, there's two um two uh, I, well there's three options. There's the way of just posting a picture and words, but I I do agree having professionalism and especially on instagram you know because you go to the what do you call it, this the preview like you go to somebody's page and you see the nine posts yeah. having some congruency between all of those is really helpful 
Um, so that the, I use Photoshop because I have a background in it. It's unnecessarily difficult as a new person, but Canva has become a, a really great way. So if it's free, canva.com. It's um, a resource that's like Photoshop. It's web-based um, photo editing and graphic design stuff. And it's canva.com. I'm not sure if you're ready to help. Yeah, so. So it's very like drag and drop, click friendly. It's it, the learning curve on it's really quick. Um, and you can go and create stuff there. So like if you have an idea of what you want, that's a very easy and free. It, it's one of those freemium places where you can pay for extra fonts and images and stuff. But if you go to Unsplash, you copy a picture, bring it to Canva, paste it in there. It's really. That's with a V. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. So um, the, the other thing is here in command, um, they have. I need to move this. Higher. There we go. Um, so they have, right, yes, designs, but there's there's a place to find, what? Well, no, I'm trying to find the ones that command has started. Because these are all the ones that, like I, I use command for our, marketing emails that we send out twice a month um as a team where, where, where are you seeing that oh this one yeah so they i i don't know where they're at because I, I use photoshop they they do have templates here yeah. and I'll, a little bit of drunk driving will be able to find it so they have templates like this that are going to be like drag and drops, you can like say you want to change this picture. Um, there should be a pop up here. Can you just drag it over? I think it's different on a Mac than it is on a Windows. I see that. Uh, yeah, so it, I, I think in a Windows, it looks slightly different. At least the, the other designer has a pop up on this side. But you can do stuff here where you could come in, change the, this, that. And they, they really do have a bunch of templates, even things like holidays and um, Black History Month that uh, it's, I think it's pulling us into the the temp templates now, and I don't know why, but I did hit the back, but it didn't take us. I think it's taken us to their their templates. It's loading, maybe. So it, this is the the other option. So Canva is the first one if you have an idea of how you want it, your templates and stuff to to look. If you don't. I've actually come in here and like, so listings, you want an open house. I've come in here to this and been like, oh, I really like this design. And I pull it up on one screen and then I recreate it in Photoshop. So then I, I, I like the editability, but once again, if you learn this, yes, normal people who like drag and drop. Yeah. So they have all this stuff. Um, if, Let's go business basics, see what that has. Uh, social branding. So, can't really see this far, but. Oh, they're okay. So, not really what we're looking for. Um, but tons, tons of different options. So, holidays in February, you can come and post about. 
Groundhog's Day and it's already got a, a stuff. And the cool thing about this one is it does pull in your, if you have your profile set up properly, it'll pull in the, the market center name, which that is something that you need to, on your posts that it needs to be within two clicks. That's one click, one click, one click that they need to be able to find your market center information. Do you guys know how to find that image? Have, have they shown you where that is? I know how to find that image. You, you can just go go Google image search Keller Williams Westfield, you'll find it that way. But if you wanna find it the, the official way, for especially if you're doing something like signs or something that, that needs a bigger image, um, if you just go to the Keller Williams Westfield home, is it KW Westfield? It's KW Westfield. Which one's this? This is the um, Unsplash. UNSP. I'll write it up here as well. Yeah, this is the photo. Black does not. UN. S-P-L-A-S-H. Um, Brady. Wish I could see. So this is the our homepage. It's where everything is anymore, which is awesome. You hit agent resources, and then I think it's in that top one, but I'm gonna, yeah. Drunk driving a little bit, because it's been a minute since I've done it. Um, and then, Brokerage logos right here. And then they have different, like the black and white ones. They have the, the red ones. You can come and download these and use them. So like if you are doing something that you want, grayscale, black and white, red, they're all here. It's gonna take forever to look, but this is where you find them. The resources and then um, additional resources and brokerage logos. And you do need that as a part of any social media stuff per our licensing rules. You don't have to have that on the post, but within your Facebook page or within your Instagram, you have to, like mm -hmm. someone has to quickly be able to see that. Yep. And then like taking it a step outside of social media, I put it on our postcards. I put it on our site, yard signage, anything that, you know. yeah. So that we're, especially where we have a, a brand name with us, we I make sure that they know that we're Keller Williams Westfield. So, um, yeah. So next we're gonna talk, way behind, I'm sorry, uh, highlighting your business. Um, so this is where you're gonna talk about hyper-local information, kind of touched on this a little bit, becoming the expert, uh, what, what's Gary's words, Becca? The, the economist of choice, but you also want to be that economist in that that region. You want to, when people think of realtor in, in Orem or Pleasant Grove, you want to be that person that they're like, oh man, that is the person who knows everything. So then, number two, that's fine. That's weird. Um, This should have what page that's on. And it doesn't. There's always like one or two that like don't get in there. They don't like they have a slide for it here, but, but not here. That's so maybe it's like an afterthought. Interesting. Oh, anyways. So, so we're, just, yeah, here. we're talking <laughs> hyper local. You want to be the economist of choice, but you also want to like what we've been doing with our YouTube strategy is we've, we've talk about every city in Utah. We're looking for relocation buyers with that. That's our, our, our goal. But we're talking about all of the cities taking 
the, the camera out showing what the cities look like. And then we also are doing YouTube shorts where we either show a restaurant or a business in the community. So when people, you know, find that they're like, oh man, they, they know all the restaurants, they know all the stuff. So you want to be that hyper local expert so that when people have questions, even if it's not real estate related, that you're the person they're going to reach out to. Um, number two is talking about user, utilizing tech developments. For me right now, the, the biggest push should be, be getting your face in front of people using video. It can be feel really uncomfortable, but just being out there talking your first videos. If, if you ever want to have fun, go watch Becca's very first couple videos. They weren't that great, but you know, the lighting was bad. The cameras back then weren't great. And she knew what she was talking about, but it was, it was rough. She did everyday Facebook video, live videos for over two years. We had over 500 videos that she, she did. And by the end of it, she can talk for hours on all of her subjects because it just became so natural. And that's really all you're trying to do is just be out there, be consistent, and at least know enough about your topic that you sound like you know what you're talking about. Um, and then talking about your business post-client host testimonials. Um, so here is the, the don't post and ghost. So this is, if you make a post, make sure you're keeping tabs on it. You know, have, have some time every day to go back in and check your posts, you know, check up, make sure no one's asked a question, no one's direct messaged you because you want to create more engagement. So if you do something funny, make sure you're prepared to go and say, hey, you know, we'll re react to the reactions. Um, so the, another leg is adding value. Uh, participate in online communities where you, so this is going back to your local communities or um, if you are looking to build something bigger, it, maybe it doesn't have to be a local community. It can be something bigger that you're just trying to become an expert. And so that that is also an option. So now we're going to talk about posting on social media um, and kind of more strategies for it. Uh, We've talked a lot about it, but being authentic to your personality, you're, you're not looking to be a uh, know-it-all about everything or, you know, the, the jack of all trades, but you're trying to be an expert in one thing, but not everything. Um, they, they also call out to embrace video, make sure that you're using the video, getting your face out there. People will start liking it and knowing you better. It, it's actually really fun with the leads we get that come from YouTube. These people call us up. And they're they're almost elated to be talking directly to her, like sitting in the passenger seat. It's like, oh, you you actually answered, and it's like, of course I answered. It's my job. But to them, they they know you. They become there's already a better bond with these leads than any other lead source that we've ever dealt with. Um, and that's all because you start building trust because they they see your face through through video. Um, using analytics, I I don't know the analytics on Instagram. Is there much there on a personal page? Because on, on Facebook, analytics is awesome. I, I go in and deep dive probably once a month to see what posts have gotten engagement, which posts are not getting engagement, which usually are, are the ones that are more serious about stats and stuff or the ones that aren't. But I still post them because I, I want to still be the ec economist of choice. But at least I post them knowing it's not going to get engagement. Where if I do a find it Friday, sometimes I'll, I'll take a picture and, and delete lamps and doorknobs from one picture and put them side by side, just like a, a sixth grade oh, kind yeah. of a, yeah. and I'll post it up there. Crazy amounts of engagement. Like <laughs> it's it's fun but you know it's not showing that we're an expert so it's it's balancing what we're doing with that stuff um but i use the analytics to to tell me which ones are the ones that i'm doing well and you know if, if all of a sudden i'm getting engagement on one type of post i might implement adding it more often or i might be like okay it's doing well because they're not seeing the same type of stuff all the time so i just using the analytics, really study it, and start trying to understand why people are reacting the way they do. And then number five, asking for help. There's a lot of people in this office that uh, 
understand these things. My door is always open. Um, so if you have questions, Instagram and analytics are fantastic. So it sounds like I uh, need to yeah. investigate into that. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, analytics, they're awesome. Uh, and, and like I said, it, if, if you're running into problems or questions, find somebody. Um, you can send me an email. You can stop by our office. If we're, we're up on the second floor, I'm on the back side. You'll see her name on the door. But I'm here most days, eight or nine to four. So, um, so just as a quick recap, we're focusing on the 1051, and we really want to focus on one social media platform until you become an expert and can do it without spending a ton of time on it. Um, then your 80-20 principle is that 80% of your posts on your personal page are personal posts and 20% are business. And those are going to be your reviews, your open houses, your, um, and, and the 80-20, nowhere is that I have found, is there any, like, you need to do one post a day, you know, it, you can split it up that you do a post every other day, a post every three days. Maybe you want to do two posts a day. Maybe you're a, like, I, I just really love it. And I want to do a post in the morning and a post at night or a, um, uh, reels in the morning and uh, or a, uh, just a regular post in the afternoon. As long as you're consistent, you will be rewarded by the, the algorithms. They, they love consistency because that's what keeps people on the platforms longer. So being consistent, you know, and that will, depending on how your frequency you're posting is how soon you'll have to come up with those business posts. So if you post daily, it's going to come less than if you post twice a day. So just be kind of aware of that. And then the above and beyond being able to post things about community service, um, you know, things that we have built into Keller Williams Red Day that we do in May um, every year. That's a great way to post about community service. Um, then there's also frequent things like the backpack drive that we did um, in September. So September, August, so this month, right? Wait, yeah. So you can, you can post about that. And even if like, if you're not sharing it with your followers to get them to donate or whatever, if you show up just to help stuff a backpack, take a picture, post it. It's a great way to, to show that you're out there in this community serving. So any ahas or questions we have? Kind of, kind of just fire hose you a whole bunch of stuff. I like your idea about, about mining friends from friends. That, that was something that I hadn't really thought about. From friends? Is that, is that that one? No. So. Go, no, go ahead. So going in, you know, my, my work history, like say I've got a friend, Chris Volk, I used to work with. Um, oh, and on, like, on, like on Facebook. So, okay. so I'll go into to his profile and click his friends. And as long as he had, doesn't have it set to private, I'll go through his list and say, you know, uh, say he's friends with an, an engineer I used to work with that I'm, I wasn't great friends with there, but I know their name, like add his friend, add his friend. So I actually go through and just try to add people that would have a name recognition mission with me. So not only do they say, oh, we've got seven friends in common, but oh, I remember Brady, you know, and, and that's what I'm looking for is, I just want to add as many people that already may know and like me. Because then building the trust so that I'm a trusted real estate professionals is easy from there. It's, you know, it's doing these uh, 80 to 20 posting showing that we're we're professionals that we're experts. That makes sense? No, no stress. I would honestly just focus on the one on Facebook and mm -hmm. okay. 
Yeah. Well, and, and what, what you'll find is that it's probably the demographic of the people that you're friends with. It's, it's probably their favorite as well. You know, you, 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 you tend to like the same things that the people that you're around. So like your, your LinkedIn too. Yeah, it, it really can be. Like, I've seen one person that I can think off the top of my head who's doing it at a very high level that actually gets quite a bit of engagement. I don't know if they get business from it, but they get a lot of engagement from it, which anytime you're getting engagement in my mind, you're being top of mind. And that's that's all this is, is you're trying to, to cultivate being top of mind and getting people's contact information so that you can just hit them all the time because it's once every 12 days you need to be in front of everybody so that that correct yeah once every 12 days is how frequently people need to see your face to remember that you're in real estate which is just just crazy can i ask you a question Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh okay i do like uh talking about the changing market and I want to include a couple of calls and I want to go into my neighborhoods and my friend neighborhoods and drop out. I'm a bar knocker. Mm-hmm. I've done it in my past career. I feel comfortable doing it. Um, I'm just wondering if they have any, any, any templates I could use for a flyer and they can do it. I'm not positive, but we can quickly look through it. What? Maybe I should ask you later because I thought the subject of the class. I. Class is over, right? Yeah, I think we talked. Oh, is it over? Yeah, I think we're, it's only till 11, right? Uh, 11.30, but whatever. The class content's done. Yeah, the class content's done, but. Yeah, a lot of times we get done. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so we're hearing the templates from KW. We're on the KW website. Yep, this is command. Oh, you're in command. Yeah, this is these are templates that command actually offers. Oh, command just templates. I'm not in command. I'll go all the way back until my stuff. I don't know how I got there. That might be tricky. Because. The problem is the link wasn't there. I would love to do a video just about how I feel about changes that are going on. It's just such a great idea. I'm kind of a dramatic stage personality. I think just think that would be really effective. I saw it. Logged this out. It's a picture. We could go and broke it. I know. I did. That's why I can't have nice things. So you're saying for my initial social media post, um, saying like I'm in the business, I should do a headshot. Okay, Mm -hmm. Okay, so you sign a command. Yeah, a headshot or you could even do one where you're like standing in front of the the office and just make sure it's as high quality as you can get. I mean, these phones have incredible cameras nowadays. Yeah. And we we had a professional, our, our photographer came and did a, a one, but we did some just out on the side of the building and they came out incredible. And I'm certain you can, you know, like it doesn't need to be a like in the office with the white back, like it yeah. can be okay. And any, you know, but if you just want something high quality that shows that yes, I am a professional. Okay. Yeah, no, it made perfect sense. I'm trying to think how I would how I would do it because I think. W- I would probably do like a, a headshot with a little bit about real estate and then in the bottom say, hey, you know, many of you already know, but I wanted to make it Facebook official I'm or Instagram official. I'm in 
trying to think now that I'm thinking about it as Instagram. Let's ask her opinion because I, 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 I feel like they, their posting strategies is just slightly different. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Right. No, see, I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like, I don't know how to perfect. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. You only get one shot to announce the year, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because most people won't know what Keller Williams is, you know, even though we're the biggest brokerage here. Like, it's not one that they don't market on TV or billboards or stuff. So nobody knows what we are. Um, so, while I would put, put it on there, I would really hit that, you know, I'm a real estate expert. Um, okay, answering the question, yeah, how to, it. how to announce it on Instagram specifically. Yeah. Um, so I would do a poll, I do your story, and then I would or do it on your post, and then share your story. So it's both because your story, more people are going to see it, and they might go back and read and have like a new announcement or something. Um, and then I would do some type of template, uh, just one of these. <laughs> Found out how to do it. I'll show you. Cool. I, I've I've been there because I've used them before, but it's it's one of those that I don't use often. So and it might have been the since they changed they they just changed command the team portion of it. If you're on a team account, uh, designs haven't been on a team account, and it actually caused me a lot of grief yesterday because my design moved from our personal account to a team account, but our email is still on personal. So I can't, can't send emails right now, but for individuals, it's not a big deal. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And then this is all the designs. And then you do one that's like a cute headshot and then has like the really more professional stuff around it. <clears throat> the one thing I would focus on with that, though, is learning the size dimensions that the uh, platform that you're posting to wants uh, so that it, it doesn't do something funny. Yeah. You know, if you put a landscape picture where it's supposed to be a square, it's going to like pull it or or potentially crop off something important. So I have on my uh, so, but I, I on my board I actually have the different sizes that I need because I can't remember stuff. So I just, you know, then I'll if you go into Canva or into this, this looks like it's already pre-formulated, but you just want to make sure you're using the right format and you just Google, you know, Instagram post size or something like that and you'll find the, the dimensions. Looks like they have a social stories as well and a social wide. And then in your comments, you can answer in your other thing. Not picture, but what's that called? Description. Description. <laughs> you can write, you know, I started at Keller Williams, they're number one for training, they're the biggest brokerage in the world. I like to connect with people outside of Utah. Like, whatever direction you want to tell them where you're going, why you're here. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So if you click the button at the very top, that's the red KW, that will make the pictures actual words so you can see what you're trying to click. Oh. Or I was sorry, I was talking to Aaron. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, so the, the first rule of being new is don't let people not know you're an agent because and they forget everything like think about an abstract friend and try to think about what they do for work you probably can like you can think of like your close five friends what they do but like their spouse maybe not so 
So the more you're posting, the more you're engaging. So you can post like I had this great class on social media today. Um, you see people do that fairly often. Mm -hmm. But so then you gotta create design for example. Right and then you're going to be right. Yeah. And like I said, if you have questions, I know we've got our, our tech coordinator. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Like this type of stuff, the guy that. Yeah. And I think he's rel relatively new to it. So if you're running into problems, swing by my office. Like, I, I really am happy to sit right. down and uh, upstairs on the, the back wall. Yeah. About halfway halfway down. So, like I said, I just sit there all day and. Mm -hmm. And we have a big whole bunch. Yeah, for door hang, we make our own door handles because it's a lot cheaper than having somebody print them for us. It's true. I can do it in in an hour and. I I do two to a page, cut it in the center, and the whole bunch of them and. Ready to go hang on doors. Yeah. So the the amount of stuff and like I said, I I don't use their designs often. And when I do, I usually take them to somewhere else. So if you find that you don't like their design template, which I don't like Canva either, but if I know a lot of people love it, um, including her. So if you find something you like, you can just reduplicate it in another in, in canva or something if if this i think they work almost identical i wouldn't even be surprised if they're on the same because it's it's just like drag and drop stuff that i just don't love any other questions um, trying to get on to the stuff done so i can like get on to command and all that stuff it's a it's a lot. So oh, I have a quick question. So like on my social media posting, um, I'm doing an open house with Amber Burke as my mentor. So um, I'm doing an open house with her person that does her open houses. So would it be appropriate? Maybe I could just ask her to put on there like, hey, you know, can we at this open house and I don't know, if you know anybody or that kind of a thing? Like looking to come to the open yeah. house. Um, if I were the agent you were working with, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely, get it out there. Let's get as many people we can through it. But also, it's it's for me the post isn't necessarily about getting. It's a, it's about saying, oh, I'm working this open house, which yeah. shows that social proof that you're already being successful. Yeah. So. I, I don't see a problem with it. You might just reach out, just say, hey, am I okay to do this? You know, but yeah, I, I would keep it as, as vague that you're not the, the agent or any yes. of that stuff as possible, just because then it's yeah. like, and you know, you, you may or may not get people to there, but it's oh, yeah, just in case. It, it just, it just yeah. building that you're an expert. Yeah. You're already out there, you know, and pe people have this misconception of what open houses really are. But that's a good in your favor if you're out doing them. So, okay. yeah, I, I I think that'd be a great idea to to either take the flyer if if they already have one or creating a post about the home. Okay. And say, hey, doing an open house that you could. What if I just say I'm going to be at this open house? I don't really know what to say. Yeah, what I would write is I, I'm I'm hosting this open house at this house on Friday. Uh, if, if you want to come out and see it, I'd love to see you. Um, if not, maybe share it with your friends. Let them know. You is know. it in the neighborhood? No, it's a, it's a house that Amber listed, and so I'm going to go and sort of shadow the girl that does her open houses for her. Oh, where is it? Uh, Riverton. Yeah. So I would just jump on and say, hey guys, I'm going to be in Riverton this time. Message me for the address because it might get you a conversation going. Because um, in the grand scheme, it does not matter if they come or not. Right. The whole point is I'm doing real estate. Yeah. <laughs> Think of me when you do real estate. Okay. So I would just say, hey guys, I'm at this, I'm going to be at this open house. And I would do video personally because video is popular. That's good um, and then the day of, 
do a video, be like, I'm at the house, let me show you. And just give the basics, like bedroom, bathroom count. Um, if there's something special, like it's in a really good school district or at a pool or just one extra thing. And they just come to message you for the address because then that'll get the conversation going. Day of, I actually put the address in the mm -hmm. top. I'm like, I'm at this open house. Let me give you a sneak peek because um, everyone loves sneak peeks mm -hmm. and everyone loves behind the scenes because they think our job is very glamorous and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> is it not? <laughs> it is not. Sorry, Stuck. Uh, okay. Surprise. So no, you no. took both of those as a video. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Just, yeah. So, it's really nice one. Oh. And when you're doing videos, like the, the, at least for me, the natural thing was, oh crap, I screwed up, you raised the duty in. Oh crap, I screwed up, you raised the duty in. If you do it, it live. Yeah, if you do it live, that's, well, you, yeah, you, it's harder to erase it. It forces you to yeah. rescue yourself. Yeah. But really, making small mistakes just makes you human Pe okay. people aren't going to unless you're making something like a really bad spelling mistake like cell versus <laughs> cell people people aren't gonna awesome. people aren't going to care too much like yeah. it's just it, it is what we're all human and and people actually like seeing that we're human so okay i i, I would just recommend that if you, you make a small mistake just keep, keep going. going it's not a big deal okay. done is better mm -hmm. than not Yes. How, how many times have I not posted something because I was like, I look stupid. I sound stupid. I hate my voice. It's time. Yeah, I could, my hair's doing this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got one lazy eye. I'm like, oh, I always go, oh, I'm so unphotogenic. And I have to keep a clear up here so I look like, you know, younger and thinner. Yeah, so, but it, just getting it out there because the people that we're, talking to like us more than we like ourselves like it, yeah in all honesty so like we're always our worst critics getting getting it out there people are just going to love seeing your face and and seeing what we're doing yeah. uh, yeah. Did you control plus? Can I, I don't know if this doesn't have just as i thought that program had a, a zoom no it's where it's, it's cool it's working so, all right, Kason, did you have any questions or anything, ahas you want to talk about? Uh, no, no questions. Okay. Like I said, my, my door is always open and I'm always just a, an email away. You can email me at my email is bradysummers at kw.com. It notifies me when <laughs> stuff comes in. It's very few things that come in, so it doesn't get lost. It's great. Yeah. So um, I guess with that, we will we'll end right here, but um, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. It's always fun to get back to basics and, and understanding how to, how to do our job. It's Thank you.